Hi, everybody. Welcome to tonight's event. Super excited. We've had a fun-filled day here with lots of events from uh, people from all over the world sharing with us. And today's speaker I'm super excited about. Um, but before we get started, I just wanted a couple of quick housekeeping for you guys. We have our Las Vegas event that's coming up in January. And if you haven't gotten your tickets, please make sure to get those tickets because we literally have less than a dozen seats left. And once it's full, it's full. So uh, we're going to be doing a lot of different things this time and really hands on. We will have Jeff Roberti there. And obviously we want to make sure that lots of people from the, from the team are there at that event. Um, there's also a regional, a super regional coming up in Dallas. Um, that event is January the 12th and 13th. There's going to be a super regional coming up in Huntington Beach, and that's in June of this year. So just a couple of things, but if you have anybody that wants to get signed up for boot camp, please get them signed up. So I'm going to go ahead and get started with our amazing speaker, an amazing woman. I just really um, just love meeting her. She's a really just a, a bundle of energy. And Caitlin Brasington um, is, oh my gosh, I didn't even realize this. She's 39-year-old mama of three girls. She joined the Juice Plus um, mission 12 months ago and is a QNMD 12 club and growing for NMD in early 2018. She's a pediatric nurse whose husband was a, what they call FIFO, fly in, fly out worker, um, flying away for work for two weeks and then home for one week. And she joined JP in hope of creating an income sustainable enough to replace, her part, um, replace part of her husband's income. So he could accept, you know, the income and be able to come home. And she's living her Juice Plus dream. I know she's an amazing upline. Um, Fiona, I think Fiona is your upline. Who Fiona and Brian, many of you might know them. Am I correct on that? Is Fiona? Yeah. Fiona. So, um, yes, from Brian and Brian Marsh. Yeah. Awesome. So amazing yeah. people. And we've heard from Brian before. And obviously what... What Brian and Fiona and Adam and Kira and Linda and everybody's doing is amazing duplication. And that really is what's most important, to teach, to teach. You know, you learn so that you can teach it to someone else. And uh, so I'm excited to share you with the world, Fiona, because we have people, I mean, sorry, uh, Caitlin, excited to share you with the world and so that you can meet all of your, you know, Juice Plus buddies around the world. I'm sure people will be checking in with you and seeing how they can support you as well. So I'm going to, so tell us your Juice Plus story and then I'll just, you know, you can either go or I can ask you questions, whatever way works best for you. So 12 months Sorry. ago, QNMD, 12 club, obvious mom of three, um, busy already, understands pediatric and nursing. So I'm just going to let, pass it on over to you. Thanks, lovely. Thank you so much for having me, and um, so lovely to see all of your faces. Um, I feel quite humbled to have been asked to, to jump on this call. So I uh, joined Juice Plus 12 months ago, well, November, end of November last year, and um, I was extremely sceptical about it, to be perfectly honest. I was um, sceptical about the business side of things. But having said that, I was aware of the products. And so already having a knowledge of the Juice Plus products made me a little bit um, more comfortable, I guess, with throwing myself into it. Um, I had been nursing a long time ago before marriage and kids. I'd nursed in London for a couple of years at um, the Royal London Hospital. And some of the paediatric gastroenterologists over there had used Juice Plus, um, had been using Juice Plus in a bit of research they were doing with healing the guts of um, bubs and children with uh, malabsorption issues. So I was aware of the product. I knew the science behind the product and with my background, um, that meant the world to me. So I jumped on board. Um, my husband was working away. So he was working away two weeks at a time and home a week at a time. And we've got three little girls. So I was juggling shifts. I was spending the majority of my nursing money on um, babysitters and before and after school care and vacation care and all of those sorts of things. And then when my husband was home, I was often, you know, we'd tag team was, hi, I'm your wife. Here are the children. I'm off to work. So it wasn't any sort of lifestyle. And we've been doing that for, for four years. So when I joined, I decided that I wanted to throw myself in and really give it my all um, in the hope of trying to 
replace a percentage of his income. Um, so replace my own income first and then replace a percentage of his income so that he could accept a big wage and come home to be with us. Um, and we've just been able to do that. So he's been home for three weeks now, which is phenomenal. So we were able to do that in the first um, year, which for our little girls has just been amazing. Um, and look, I think what I probably wanted to, I was asked to pick a bit of a topic to talk about with you guys. And I think what I probably want to talk about is commitment because I think that is the biggest thing that I had from the word go. I had full commitment to this. Um, I never wanted to dip my toe in it. I never saw it as a hobby. Um, I just wanted to throw myself into it and give it my everything. And the big thing that I did was um, I made a promise. I made a promise to my little girls and I'm going to get emotional. Isn't that ridiculous? Um, and I made a promise to my husband. I made a promise to myself, but I also put that promise out there. So I didn't just hold it inside and keep it in the back of my head and think that maybe I'd try, try, I hate the word try, um, to make it happen. It was a, I am going to do this. It was a full commitment. Um, before I started on this journey, I had, you know, a while before, I'd, um, I'd seen a TED talk quite a long time ago. I'm sure most of you have seen it a hundred times, but it was, um, it was called Because I Said I Would by Alex Sheen. And he has developed the Promise Card movement, which I'm sure you've all heard of before. If you haven't, I highly recommend at least watching that TED talk and, and having a look at his website, which is the Because I Said I Would website. Um, but that hit me, um, and that was before my Juice Plus journey. But I, I was already aware of the power of making a promise and making a commitment. Um, and the, a promise, if we make a promise to someone else out loud, uh, it actually speaks to the core of our emotions. It makes us more committed than if we just try to do something. Um, so the promise cards that he's developed are, are simply a little white card that at the bottom of them, they say, because I said I would. And the concept behind them is that you write a promise on that and you give it to someone. Um, or you put it up on your vision board or you share it on social media. So I actually shared my promise all over social media, which made it an even bigger commitment because I didn't want to fail. I didn't want the naysayers to say, you know, we, we told you couldn't do it. And believe me, there's been plenty of naysayers. There's been the neg ferrets and the people that think this is a ridiculous concept and that um, I can never do it. So I guess it basically, that the promise card and the commitment basically embraces um, the concept that physically writing it down um, and giving that to someone else is going to make you more committed and more set. Now, I guess that commitment is more set in stone um, and it forces us to make a stronger commitment to ourselves. Um, and when you're fully committed to something, you take a really big no excuses standpoint. You know, there's no excuses. Um, all there is, is is priorities and results. And so Juice Plus and this business became my full priority. Um, and it, it was a family commitment too. It was very much a family goal. The girls, my girls are, well, they're now, they weren't then, they, they are now 10, 8 and 4. But they knew from the word go what was on the cards here. They knew that if mummy could make a certain amount of money by working her butt off and possibly not being able to read them bedside, bedside, bedtime stories every single night and possibly, um, you know, <laughs> having to be on Zoom calls when they prefer to be out playing in the park and all of those sort of things. But that the, the thing on the line was that I may be able to make enough money, I would make enough money to bring their daddy home. So making a family commitment and getting the family involved, I think um, it, it makes it so much easier, especially for kids. If you've got young kids, obviously if you've got teenage kids, it's different. Again, if you've got toddlers, it's really different. Um, my youngest when I started was three and a half. So um, she did have a bit of an idea um, about time and, and quiet time, which were, I was lucky for. And I know if you've got bubs in arms and toddlers, it's, um, it's a bit different. But they, the kids have been on board from the word go. Um, and so has my husband, you know, when, when he was home between, between weeks away, uh, he was extremely supportive. Um, and that's, that's certainly part of the family commitment, I guess. Um, 
So let me ask you, and as I, said, I have a question. So when you gave everybody the Because I Am cards, what, who were the people that really held you to it? Were there certain people that held you to it? To it and were there certain people um, that you were maybe, that maybe were, were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or did you, did you make any breakthroughs with regards to that? When you gave that I think, I think there are those closest to me, as in um, my, our extended family. Right. They were very supportive and, you know, pat on the back and well done you, but no one truly believed it, I don't think. You know, there's some um, network marketing is, is a law unto its own, really. Right. And if you haven't had any experience in it, um, there's going to be scepticisms. I was sceptical beforehand, so I understood their scepticisms. Um, and I think that any negativity probably just made me stronger. Yeah. And any, any, um, any knockbacks... I mean, God, there are a couple of shocking knockbacks and we've all had them, but I've had a couple of shocking knockbacks of people being really nasty. Um, and you, you have a bit of a cry, you know, I'll, I'll sometimes shut myself in the pantry and pour a glass of wine and sit on a stool and feel sorry for myself. And, and then, you know, you need, what is it? Eight no's before you get a, a yes. So you dust yourself off and pick yourself back up and, and go for it again. Um, so look, there, there were no, um, no, there were no absolute backers in my family and friends. Um, probably my two oldest, dearest friends are still very anti this, um, very anti it. I can't discuss this business with them. Um, they're happy for me that I've managed to bring my husband home. Um, but they were two girls that they were my bridesmaids and I was their bridesmaids. So um, I think we all get those and you just can't let that stop you. You know, it's um, this is my dream and my commitment and I'm not going to let any of those external things. Sorry, kids. So it's school so holidays here in Australia. There's hey, a, a Joel Olstein says, it says, don't ever let anybody name your baby, right? Because meaning it's your dream, right? So for someone to tell you that it's not going to happen, they don't know because it's not their dream. So yes. I love it. I love it that because I can. Okay, awesome. Hope I didn't take you off track, but beautiful. And you're not, <laughs> and everybody could tell you, you're definitely um, one of my favorites because I'm, I'm the same thing. All excuses are equal. You know what I mean? If it's a priority, yeah. you'll do it. So exactly, exactly. And look, when, when I first started, um, I was still nursing. I was still doing shifts at the hospital and shifts at a boarding school um, and juggling the three kids and, and running the house. So I, I don't even think time is an excuse. And I, I'm very much a believer that kids are 100% not an excuse. They're a reason why. You know, they, they are every reason why we should be giving it our all. Um, and, and this can be built in those stolen moments. But in saying that, you need to be committed in those stolen moments. You can't sit on Facebook scrolling and... Um, and realize that you've just lost an hour of your day and you haven't done anything. You've got to, you've got to stay true to what you're sitting down there to do. Um, and I think if you don't have that commitment, if you don't make that full commitment that you are going to make this work and you're going to make it successful, there's always a hesitancy and there's a chance that you can draw back and there's a chance that you can remove yourself from that end goal. And there's an, there's an ineffectiveness to what you actually get done in the day. Um, because you're not committed, you, know, you haven't made that pure commitment. Um, and I think we all experience that at some stage in life. Um, when we really want something, but we don't fully commit to it, because we know if we don't make that commitment, especially if we don't make it out loud, then there's an out. There's an excuse. There's, we can go, oh, well, I didn't, I didn't succeed because I didn't fully put my heart and soul in it, or I didn't, I didn't really try my hardest. So to remove that hesitancy and remove that ineffectiveness, you have to make that full commitment from the word go. Um, and be bold in your commitment. There's a boldness that we have to make. Um, there's a genius and a power to boldness, to being really bold and having that absolute self-belief. Even if really there's a tiny bit of you going, holy shit, what have I just done? <laughs> what have I just committed to? Um, there's a boldness. That, that people want to follow. People want to follow someone who's got that full self-belief and full um, commitment to something. 
and belief in something, not just self-belief, but belief in, in everything, you know, belief in the product, the business, the industry, ourselves, the whole lot. Um, so there's, there's five questions that I really regularly ask myself. Um, and I've had to change these as I go along. I've had to change my commitment um, recently because my massive commitment was to bring my husband home and I've now done that. So the really important thing is, is to now make that pivot and make a new commitment because otherwise my business, instead of <laughs> continuing to go up, is going to take a dive or stabilise. Um, so the five questions I ask myself and, and I try and talk to my team about, um, one of them is what are you committed to achieving? What exactly is it? And it can't just be I want to be an MD or I want to, it's got to be really specific, talking dollars per month, really breaking it down. And it can be big picture. It can be in two years' time I want to have replaced my full-time income. But if it's, if it's big picture, it's got to be broken down monthly. Yes, please. Don't forget. Thank you. Don't, don't leave the whole bag in there. <laughs> you don't want to walk there and look at people. It's a guy looking, so, whoever's you know, looking at people, whoever the guy is, is looking at people. All right. Thank okay. you. <laughs> um, so what, what are you committed to achieving is, is the first question. And then can you, if you haven't achieved that or you, you've hit your end date and that, that hasn't been achieved yet, you didn't quite meet that target, you didn't quite get that pr promotion, can you look in the mirror and 100% honestly tell yourself that you have given it your all? that you've done everything, that you've followed the system, done your, um, you know, high-paying activities day in, day out. You've had the conversations. You've done the follow-ups. Can you 100% look in the mirror and tell yourself, I gave it absolutely everything I've got? Um, the third one is how hard and how long have you been working? So if, you're, if your goal was to hit an MD in a year, it has been done, I think, by Brian Marsh, but I don't know if that's done very regularly around the world. Um, have, you, have you set a realistic commitment? You know, a commitment is fabulous, but it does need to be a little bit realistic as well. Um, and I think one of the really hard things in this business, certainly we see it a lot in, in my team and my, my sidelines and things, is the whole comparatonitis. So if someone in your team has done this really fast, and you haven't quite done it as fast, um, that whole comparing yourself to someone else can be, it can be paralyzing. It can, it can kill businesses, it can certainly stall businesses, and it can slow businesses down way too much. Um, so get in your own head and your own heart, and if you're comparing the one hour a day that you do in your business to someone else who's able to commit six hours a day to their business, you're not really comparing apples for apples. So set your own commitments, not someone else's commitments, your own goals. Um, Linda Evenden, who's one of my beautiful mentors, um, often says, don't complain about the results you don't get for the work you don't do. So really looking at if you're not getting those results, are you doing the work for it? If you want a full-time wage, are you working a full-time job? Are you treating this as a job? Um, the next one was, did you set your expectations too high, which I've sort of covered in that one. Um, can you guys just play over there? Thank you. I want to see them all. Come on in. Sorry. Come on in. Let's see the gang. Come on in. Evie, JJ, do you want to say hi? They're coming from the other direction now. Hey, hi. 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 They're saying hi to people. America and Australia and I don't know where else. You've got the UK on. UK on. This is Georgia and this is Evie. Georgia, that's Hi. perfect. I love your name. I went to the University of Georgia. So <laughs> did you? Yeah, we're Thanks. going to the Rose Bowl. So that's a good <laughs> that's a good name. Thank you for sharing your mommy with us. Bye. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Um, sorry, I've totally lost my train of thought there now. <laughs> um, where was I? I think the next one was, um, you said, did I set my expectations too high? Thank you very much. Thank you. 
Um, so yeah, it's per imperative to work out why you haven't got to somewhere, like really break it down, strip things back and work out why you haven't got to what you've committed to. Um, and it, it usually comes down to belief. When I first started out being a pediatric nurse, I went hard on, with the products and I did very well with bringing on customers, um, but I wasn't bringing on team. And it's so important to bring on team as soon as you bring on customers. And I was struggling with team and that was purely because I didn't have the belief in the business. I didn't have the belief that um, it was going to be a sustainable business. And so I had to go to work on myself. I had to um, educate myself and learn more and do professional development, personal development, the whole lot. But I had to go to work on my belief in the business and the industry. Um, so I really do believe it comes down to belief in either yourself, in our products, in the business or in the industry. And if you don't grow personally in this business, your business can't grow. Um, I know as a, as a nurse, I have to sign a legal document every 12 months to say that I have done a certain number of hours of professional development within that last 12 months. If, if all other industries expect that, why wouldn't this industry expect this, that? And I think a lot of people do join this um, thinking that it is a quick get rich quick scheme or, you know, it's just going to success and results are just going to land in their lap and it's not the case. Um, and as you go up in different levels, you've got to learn different things. You know, I'm, I'm very new to the whole leadership side of this um, and I'm needing to learn how to inspire a team. Um, not motivate because I can't motivate anyone else. They need to have some self-motivation, but I do need to be able to inspire. Um, and that's, that's new to me in this business. So I've got to learn how to do that. It's just continually growing. So the business continues to grow. Um, did you have anything you wanted to say there, Lauren? I just love everything that you're saying. I love the questions you ask yourself. I love what I think, you know, the biggest thing I think that everybody's really hearing and that's so important, um, another, Gemma shared it today uh, from the beginning is she goes, when she started her business, um, you know, the challenges some people make is they get so focused on customers, they forget to build team and you've got to build team from day one, you know, otherwise you're just going to be, like you said, retailing, it's not going it, to, it's all about team. And that's why we do a, a, a fast track to SC call because that, because that's really where you start to develop momentum with team, right? And so picking that top, you know, who are the top 12 people if you're going to go wide in your business and there's momentum. And then you also don't start to babysit people. They start to, you know, challenge each other when there's more people on front line. So maybe you could talk a little bit about your front line and how maybe now you're not having to babysit so much because you are, you're a 12 club. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Look at, <laughs> it fluctuates a bit. Um, I'm at that club stage that it can go up and down a club every month. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. Um, I've got some amazing girls in my front line who, who wanted this as much as I did uh, when they first started and, and certainly made big commitments as well. Um, and they're growing, growing beautiful teams. Um, and then there's, there's other girls that are doing it on the side and they're, they're still, they still have a full-time professional job. And so they're not going as fast, but they're growing exponentially in their personal growth and their, their um, beliefs. Uh, and I think that's just as important at this stage for some of them. So um, I, I'm a big believer that we do need to hold their hands for that first 30 days. Um, I've changed things up recently uh, in our team and really looking at holding hands until SDVF. I don't know if it's called the same thing over there. Yep, same thing as uh, VF. Yep. Yeah. 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 Um, so until they get that first team member and their first sort of 4,000 points to get that first decent promotion, um, because there, it can be really overwhelming at the start. And if we're attracting people who have other jobs and who are breastfeeding babies and have lots, I'm seeing a couple of my girls on now who I know are probably sitting on the couch breastfeeding a baby. Hi, Shan. Um, so if we are attracting those sort of people, um, and we're telling them it can be done in stolen moments. And yet we're saying you need to get this many customers within your first 30 or 40 days and, um, and a team member. It can be very overwhelming. They're added to five different Facebook groups and um, told a million different things. So the holding hands for that until they get to that first promotion, um, which is very much the, the teach them 
show them, let them thing, um, and and then let them go on their way from there. But still, still offering them as much support as they need. Um, and it, it, we've got a wonderful team. We've got a in my team. I've got some of the most amazing women. We've got teachers and mums, and I've got two dietitians in my team who are superb. Because if anything comes up that's a bit of a curly question regarding the product, they can always jump in and help. Um, so it, it's a phenomenal team of women, and and having those chat groups with with different people who are at different stages. So at the moment I've got a chat group that's just a, an action group and it's really just the girls who are working hard that are able to commit to it and I set a daily challenge or it might not even be a challenge. Sometimes I'll just put in a 30-minute um, a TED Talk and ask them all to watch it and, and list down their, their best bits from it. But so they're, they're learning off each other as they go. Um, I'm not pouring into them all the time. We're all pouring into each other, which I love. I love that. And that's what, that's what I meant. You know, they, they're starting supporting each other. Right. And they, yeah, absolutely. beautiful. Yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. I want to be respectful of your time. Let's find out. I mean, you did a great job. I just want to tell you, I just love everything that you're doing. I'm really proud of you and how you're growing and just your amazing duplication. Let's see if there's any questions from anybody. Um, anybody have any questions or comments? Anyone? Anyone? I know there's lots of people on the line. So, anybody want to ask a question or I just one year to NM, one year to QNMD Twelve Club? I would. I'd be asking some questions. <laughs> anybody? I have my because I said I would oh, card right here. Yay! Some promise cards. I love that. And what I is that? that? And what is that, Terry? It says, um, "Well, these were just statements that." I wrote down, but I have some promises to myself to step out and push myself, like to come down on Saturday. And I have an, I approach Stacy Joy and I have her coming out on Thursday night. And we have uh, a big facility rented and we have lots of people coming. And just continue stepping out there. I have an event on Saturday and just making sure that. I'm saying yes in a bold way instead of saying, oh, I kind of do this. So I'm stepping out and being more and was very inspired tonight. And I appreciate your, your time, Caitlin. Awesome. Thank you so much. And I love that. I think that the stepping out of your comfort zone and getting over fears in this business is huge. Um, Brian Marsh asked me to, to lead some training here in Australia tonight. And in my reply to him, I actually wrote, every bone in my body right now wants to say no. Because, you know, I, I get the, the heart rush and I get all, I get all red. And, um, but, of course, I'll say yes because that's what we do in this business, right? And I'm not going to grow if I don't keep getting over those fears. And so I love that you said that. And, you wanna like, and it feels good because you want to do a great job, right? You want to do, I mean, I know even I get... Even I get nervous. I still get emotional on Linda's call that she just did. You know, I once again I got all emotional. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I told myself I wasn't gonna get emotional, right? But you care so deeply. And I think that's the other thing about this business is, you know, for for you know, my 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 business is at a nice place, you know, a nice place, but I'm not thinking about me. I'm thinking about who who's the next person to go NMD here, you know, who's the next person whose lives gonna be changed because maybe they were on the call tonight. And, Hear that information so I think that what's what's fun is where we're at and where you're where you're growing is you know just seeing other people step up you know so um, and we, you know, we want them we want them to walk away with some aha I mean I walk away with aha every time I listen to these events that you're on you know doesn't mean we've arrived and there's nothing to learn you're either growing or dying like you said so I'm gonna let you pick somebody to give a present away to so Tell me when to stop. Don't look over. Don't look over. Just tell me when to stop. 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 Stop. Shannon. Is Shannon? Where's Shannon? Shannon. Oh, Shannon. <laughs> Get me her address and I'll send her a present as well. Oh, thank you. That's beautiful. Lauren, I've just seen that Mo has put in here into the chat, asked about what a DMO is. Is that right, Mo? Is it Mo? Mo? Asking about a DMO? No. There's no way. Mo? No, no, what your DMO was. Oh, what my DMO, <laughs> what DMO is. Okay. I was about to have a heart attack. I was going to have to 
come through yeah. strong. And what is the DM, Morgan? No. <laughs> um, what my DMO is, uh, my standard is always that I've got to do 20, oh, I've got to be, this is Australia, I've got a massive bug flying around me. Um, I've, got to, I've got to do 20 reach outs, um, that's just loving on people on Facebook or Instagram um, or commenting on their, their things. Those ones I, you, I usually do family, uh, sorry, friends on Facebook that are not already on board and it's not business related. It's just love your dress, you look gorgeous, those sort of things. Um, I do eight follow-ups a day, um, so people that haven't got back to me and there's plenty of them and it can take people a very long time. So don't, don't write people off too early. I've got one gorgeous girl who's just joined my team and hit SDVF in, in two weeks, I think, um, who I was at high school with 20 years ago, more than that. Um, and she has not liked or commented on one of my posts for the last 12 months, nothing. And she reached out and said, okay, I'm in, tell me what I need to do. And I haven't spoken to her in 18 years. Yeah. So people watch consistency is key. Um, and then I post I, I, social media very, very consistently at least um, twice a day. It will sometimes be once a day on weekends, but it's usually two to three times a day on social media. Certainly not a juice plus real. It is, um, it's our life as well. Recipes, um, really trying to make it attractive for people to follow um, and be value added. Um, lots of tips on how to get kids sweet, healthy meals, those sort of things in there as well. Um, so that's, oh, and coaching calls, doing coaching calls with my team and um, obviously regular Zooms with potentials. Awesome. I too, that the event we just did in San Diego, the friend of mine, we've been friends for 26 years, same thing, never commented on a post, never liked a post. And then, you know, nine years, says I've been watching you for nine years, sign me up. And I'm like, sign you up for what, right? And yes. so, so it's great for everybody to hear that it's not just me talking about it, it's people are watching and they see you're consistent. So, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Anyone else, any comments, questions? I look forward to seeing you. Hopefully you're going to be here in Phoenix with us, with your team. I hope so. Yeah. Awesome. awesome. That'd be wonderful. Awesome. Thank you for having me. Thanks, everybody. We'll be sharing this with everybody around the world. So uh, thanks so much. Bye. Bye. Thanks.